Hello everyone, my name is PJ and this is my friend Tyler. Welcome back to 2P Amnesia Part 2. Yep, so we just read some history about Alexander and... That's actually some pretty interesting uh, history. Basically alluding to things. Ooh, things. What? Be more vague. <laughs> That's as vague as I can be right now. Well, anyway, I lit those so I shouldn't need the lantern. Now, basically what you need to do, because there was a cutscene that hinted at what to do, you gotta pull all these silver-colored books in, out in quick succession. That's not one of them. <laughs> well, first you gotta find out where they all are. There you go. There we go. Yep, you made it. You can never be too careful, Daniel. God, I wonder how... Like, realistically, how does that puzzle work? Well, most likely, um, there's probably... The books themselves are probably fake. Uh, and they just attach to some sort of mechanism in the wall. That, uh, it, the actual bookshelf itself, itself must be on some sort of pulley system. And it pulls it to the left or right, basically, when... And it must lock into place when it's not being operated. Ooh, note. Regarding closing of the wine cellar. Wilhelm and his force have endangered my research long enough with their absent-minded handling of the human vessels. The sheriff is keeping a watchful eye on the forest and is killing my trusty servants. It's just a matter of time until they follow my trail to Brennenburg. I need to lock Wilhelm and his men up to avoid in to avoid further investigation from the public. Wouldn't that just make you more suspicious if your entire police force has vanished? <laughs> The wine cellar will therefore be sealed off until the matter has been handled. Either the king's men leave or they will starve. Whatever comes first, they can rot for all I care. Maybe I will feed them some wine. It would, in a sense, solve both of my problems. Mm-hmm. And there's a key! That's a wine cellar key. And that's, what we, that's basically what we came here for. Well, at this point, it expects you to, you know, like, hide in a closet or something. Yeah. But there's nothing there. Yeah. I don't know what made this door burst open. A lot of random shit happens in this game just to freak you out, and it doesn't actually make any lore sense. Well, yeah, because lore-wise, I mean... Oh, there's, there's something. There's something. Yep. Um, the place itself effectively just isn't really haunted, is it? Not really. Okay, that window can't break. Some windows can break. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a spooky place, and I guess you're, I guess most of the stuff that you see... Yeah, it is like nighttime now. At least it's getting later, you know? Or is it just foggy? I guess it's just foggy now? Mm. I mean, how did time move that quickly? I don't know, but the light is still coming in from a higher angle, so... It's not nighttime, it's... Something. Getting close to dusk. Hmm. Hell, it might even be dawn. Yeah, it could be dawn. Yeah, but you can hear something, but there's nothing. You can look forever and you won't find anything. Anyway, we found the wine cellar key. It's all there was to do up here besides find the notes. Yeah. Oh, oh, whoa, that's new. It's not new. It's the shadow. Well, yeah. no, well, it's new for it's new for the viewers. Well, you made it sound like it was new to you. <laughs> That's the shadow, though, yes. Yeah, this is the shadow that your past self's note to you was supposed to warn you about. It just It's just this goop that grows all over the castle in your direction and tries to kill you. I don't really know how it even goes about killing you. It just sort of hurts you. Yeah, it just kind of hurts you on contact sometimes. Other times, you just walk on it and it does nothing. It's very inconsistent. Yeah, so now we can actually get that first puzzle taken care of now. We, we already solved a puzzle. Well, the the chemical puzzle. I call that the first puzzle because it's the first one you run across. Also, so, this seems to be really consistent, but every time there's a loading screen, uh, the game starts crashing a little bit. Y yeah. It might have something to do with the window mode. Where did the pirate go? Who cares? He left us. Lisa 
Yeah, so those are some drunk cops. Yeah, see, but here's the problem with this whole, like, amnesia thing, right? Like, how did he have memory of that? Isn't it just coming back to him? Oh, wait, no. Yeah, you're wondering why he remembered that scene in the first place? Yeah. Amnesia or no? Yeah. No idea. Maybe he was down here spying on them, or... I think I think sometimes the developers themselves didn't know what they were trying to do. Yeah, just sometimes... <laughs> sometimes Daniel remembers scenes that he wasn't there for. Like Freezer. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me, but that's so funny. <laughs> What'd you say? Fragrance, the maskless rogues. That's what it sounded like to me. The mask of rogues? The mask the maskless rogues. No no no. I think you said fragrance, which is the mask of rogues. Oh, 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 that makes sense. Okay. Calamine, and then yeah. Boom. Why is this happening? I don't understand. Oh, is it the darkness? It's the shadow, yeah. The yes. shadow, it's yeah. Making okay. the whole castle shake somehow. Okay, okay. It's the shadow. Alright. Because yeah, remember, if you just make a really viscous red substance and pour it... Oh, no oil left? Uh, There's an oil in the corner, I believe. Just pour it all over your castle, then there'll be earthquakes. Okay, so this is the one room when I played where I got stuck in for, like, ages. Uh, I believe... There's something in the ceiling, isn't there? You have to pull out? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not technically. This is pretty much just a puzzle to help you get used to the physics. Basically, you just gotta pull all of this stuff out of the way. Um. Well, I'm gonna get the one from behind it first. Yeah, because that stuff is so heavy, you can't lift it. You can only drag it. Yeah. I think it's far enough away. There you go. There we go. Okay, you have to right-click on it while holding it with the left-click. Now we can push that out of the way. Well, it, it just wasn't very clear to me when I played this that you're supposed to move the rocks out of the way. Like... It just wasn't very clear. It doesn't, yeah. Because you see something like that in most video games and you can't even interact with it at all. Because yeah. games just typically don't let you. Well, mm hmm. Did you get stuck? I think you got stuck. Oh, there you go. Come on. Good enough. And then the other one will basically do the same thing, just pull it out of the way. Yep, as long as it's out of the way enough for you to open the door, you're good. There's nothing else in that room? Nope, we already grabbed the bottle. That's what made the barrel fall on our head. I must be thinking of another room, then. That has, like, uh, something with a cord in the ceiling? Uh, yeah, that's way later. Okay. Oh, someone wants in. Nope. Uh, no, fucking ding dong ding dong ditch players. <laughs> Why would they be in a haunted castle in the middle of, like, England? Is this in England? Or France? No. I told you, it's like in Germany or something. I forget. Alright, just gonna watch this candle for a while until the screen stops shaking. There we go. Seriously, Daniel's a really me really weird guy. He just has to sit there and just stare at a candle to, like, feel safe. Like, that's very weird. <laughs> Except we're not getting out of here. How can you say that? Alexander, you piece of shit! Let us out of here! <laughs> Why did they explode? Because Alexander poisoned the wine. And that I'm assuming he turned them into the grunt monsters that we've seen wandering around. Okay. Because that's what he was implying when he said that he would solve both of his problems. Alright. Because the cops were killing his grunts. Wilhelm's last words. My name is Wilhelm, House of Garrick. These are my final words, my confession and testament. 
Two years ago, I was summoned to the castle Brennenburg. As most of the aristocracy, I was curious about what this supposed knight of the order could want from me and accepted the invitation. The baron was friendly and offered me a proposition. It dawned on me that the nature of the contract was sordid and that the reason I was chosen was because of the follies of my past and not the horrors, uh, sorry, and not the honors I'd been rewarded with during my time as a soldier. I was to kidnap healthy humans upon his slightest whim and do so without asking questions. In return, he would attest to my character at the royal court, and advancing my position within noble society. I would like to claim that I struggled with my decision, but it came swiftly and I accepted wholeheartedly. So basically, he thought about it, but not for long. Yeah, basically. Ever since that day, I've brought men, women, and children to Bredenburg. I can't remember the numbers, but there were many, perhaps even a hundred, none of whom were ever seen or heard from again. Tonight the Baron invited me and my men down to the wine cellar to celebrate our work. I had my suspicions as we descended the stairs, but he insisted and joined us in a toast. The wine tasted fine and my men drank without restraint. So begins the punishment for our sins. The Baron has locked us up and returned upstairs. Forgive me for what I have done. I was weak and fell into his diabolic ways. My men are screaming. Their skin has been pierced by their own tangled bones. I feel my insides revolt against their God-given nature. Blood has begun to, begun to pour from my eyes, and I can no longer... Lucky, luckily, they, he left him a pen and a sheet of paper to write with. I can no longer finish my sentences. God, no wonder I always got bad grades in school. <laughs> now, see, here, here's the thing, right? Uh... I know that the whole idea of uh, having a horror game, or any game for that matter, tell its story mostly through notes or audio logs or whatever. I tire so much of that nowadays because almost everything uses that. Um, it, it was it was much a much larger thing back in the amnesia days. I say I say amnesia days like it's so much further behind, but. I just, uh, I just hope that eventually uh, developers kind of learn maybe not to tell their story solely through logs left by people who would not really be recording at the moment, you know? Yeah, because how many people actually keep such accurate records of their lives, like, all the time, especially in life or death scenarios? I mean, really. Yeah, it's, it's very odd. Well, anyway, something's about to happen. And it's supposed to be, it's supposed to teach you about, like, how to hide from monsters and stuff. But we come over here. I think I just grabbed this. Yeah, we can see a monster, and we've just run right toward it. Nothing happens. We nope. can stare right at him, and he doesn't notice us. And we come around the corner, he's gone. You're not, you're playing to win, man. Stop playing to win. <laughs> I'm not playing to win. I'm playing to show this game off. <laughs> but you're you're pulling the wool out from under your eyes, man. I mean from from over my eyes. From over your eyes. Well. Why would the wool be under my eyes? That sounds gross. <laughs> well, I, I I thought that's how the saying went. Wool out from over your. It's over, not under. Okay. Yes. Okay. I hate that noise so much because it, I, I keep hearing it and I keep thinking like of what the actual game developers use for the sound effect. Like, did they rub like two like uh like peanut shells together or something? Like, how do they make that noise? I don't know. Okay, there should be just one more ingredient that we have to find down here. <laughs> Why did you throw the box for? I felt like it. I picked it up to see what was under it, and then I threw it because I was done. Here it is. Or orpiment. Yep. And you hear that sound? That sound plays whenever you've made progress. It restores your sanity. Mm -hmm. I, guess, I guess you could say it's a dopamine injection or something. Yeah, he just like, wow, I'm good. I shaved partial. I shaved partial. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying. You know. 
After enduring three days in Algiers, the sailboat was finally arranged to take him across the Mediterranean Sea to Gibraltar, having reached British territory, which was a matter of reserving a cabin on SS Potentia, headed for London. Mm -hmm. London. That's where Daniel comes from. And there's more shadow now. There's almost no way to dodge it, so just get used to being hit a lot. Yeah, see, now we can step on it, no problem. Like, I don't get it. It makes no sense. It just happens to make you think that, you know, it's dangerous. It just happens randomly. Yeah, are, are you even really being hurt by it? Like, what's your status right now? Well, now you're going to be hurt. A few cuts okay, and bruises. Okay, so it is actually hurting you. And Ladonum is a healing item. That's all it is. Ladon and down and dumb. Isn't it laudanum? Laudanum, whatever. Yeah. Okay, so now we can use all four of these ingredients on this thing. Daniel knows which ones they actually go into, so don't worry about that. And that is the sound of the stairwell falling down. Mm -hmm. Which I don't know if that happens if you only get three of the ingredients and bring them here. But it doesn't matter, because you don't need to do anything down here to get out. It's basically just another puzzle to solve. I can... You guys, turn the valves. I know, I know. Okay. Let me talk, jeez. Sorry. <laughs> well, keep, keep talking then. I was already done talking. Oh, wait, then why'd you tell me? You don't make any sense. I was talking. Oh, I have to turn these now. Wow, man. Okay, pot of acid, which we never even showed what that was for. Nope. Uh, oh well. But yeah, the stairs broke, so now we need to... Sorry, just tell me my fingers. My fingers get really uh, stiff all the time, so you probably hear that on the recordings all the time. <laughs> I think they hear me cracking my knuckles most of the time. Okay. Well, anyway, uh... Yeah, funny thing about cracking my knuckles, like, you know how, you, like, you do you do the whole this thing like this, right? Or, like, you press them down? Like, that's how you do it? Well, I can crack them without doing that. Well, I'm just saying, is like, I know a lot of people will do this, like, where they'll do the hand out thing. And I, I can't crack my fingers like that anymore. I don't know why. Like, the only, the only way I can actually crack my fingers is if I actually take each one individually and just, like, bend it left and right. Is the only way I can actually do it anymore. It's the same way, like, if I try and crack my neck anymore, it just, it just causes me headaches. How many boxes do you need to get up there? You can rotate it in your hands, can't you? Oh yeah, you hold down R. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Come on. What are you doing? Yeah, just go under. I was trying, but the part above my head was stopping me. I almost never do this the, the like intended way. Yeah, there you got, you got it. Okay. There we go. Like, even though Daniel would realistically be too heavy for, to actually hold up your weight on that small bit of wood. You know what would be hilarious? Yeah. If you were never intended to get back up that way, if there's some other way that you're supposed to get up that nobody is aware of. Yeah. See, you just get hit. Does not matter. Squishy. Squishy squish. Alright, well now... Wait, did yeah. you... You actually grabbed the explosive com compound, right? Yes. Okay. Well, you come down here, and there's a big wall of the stuff. It's not explosive, it's just acid. Ah. And you use it to burn it away. Which lets you pass through. But it does you no good, because it's just going to grow back. It became impossible to avoid. The commotion in the streets begged for his attention. As he opened the shutters, the French soldiers opened fire on the two young men fighting back. Their voices were silenced in a haze of gun smoke. I'm, I'm very confused. So you made that acid just to empty, like just to. Oh, gosh. It sure is dark in here. Yes, and there's a good reason for it. But you can light the lamp now if you wish. What's the reason? For the darkness, that is. Stay close. Be careful not to stray. 
What's the reason? Why is it so dark? Pay attention, Dantle. It's important that you keep going straight and make sure not to stray. I just keep avoiding his questions, Alexander God. But you made the acid just to clear away a section of the dark of the darkness? Shadow? Shadow? Whatever. Whatever it is. Um But like was that were you supposed to go down there first and see the wall so that you can make the connection in, in Daniel's head of what he wants to do? Yeah, but the game didn't force you to look at it. Okay. Well, be careful when enemies are near. What enemy? You mean that enemy? Hey, let's go say hi to him. Hi, hi buddy. Hi. Aww. Oh, no. He hugged us too hard. <laughs> Think before running. Yeah, but here's the biggest problem with this game. That guy's gone now. Yeah. So now we can wander this area safely. See, I don't... I don't get it. Like, I... You know, wouldn't it have been kind of neat, maybe, if there was a an alternate ending, a secret one, that you could only get by never causing them to despawn? Wouldn't that have been interesting, like, a little prize? Or, like, a deathless one? Yeah. Hmm, I don't know. But, like, but really, like, I, I cannot believe it's designed this way. Because cause now, we, and it'll never be scary now. Ever. Well, there are some enemies that don't despawn. <gasps> oh no. 22nd of June, 1839. It's been more than a month since my last entry. After the event inside the underground chamber in Algeria, Professor Herbert insisted I return to England. He said he didn't want to risk forfeiting the entire expedition lest I took a turn for the worse. An excessive decision in retrospect. But I'm glad it turned out that way. I found my journal this morning in the haphazard collection of things brought home from Africa. Next to it lay the broken stone orb wrapped in cloth. I tried to assemble it, but couldn't. The pieces wouldn't fit together as if they weren't from the same object. Could I have imagined it all? Was there ever a complete orb? I think we may have skipped one. Yeah. And that's nothing. Daniel, why are you such a baby? And that, that's another big problem with this game, is that it really wants you to experience the whole story, but then it makes the note pages missable. In a way... This game is built very, very similarly to <laughs> um, the Silent Hill game on the Wii. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Shadow Memories. Shadow Memories. Um, I don't really like the way that's done either. I love Shadow Memories. I, I don't like it because it literally... It, it's not scary. 25th of June, 1839. I feel the need... To continue this journal, even though it was intended for my journey to Africa, this must be something very important. I just know it. I've taken it upon myself to piece the orb back together, but it's been more difficult than one might think. The pieces are behaving strangely. They seem to change color, shape, and texture, but ever so slightly. Yesterday, I took careful measurements and notated any significant markings. Today, I confirmed my suspicions. They were changing. I was terrified and rushed off to see the finest geologist in London, Sir William Smith. I approached the subject with care and we discussed how rocks change form. He told me about the nature of glass, how it eventually collapses on itself like ice slowly melting over the course of centuries. Smith eased my mind a bit, but I can't escape the feeling that these shards have otherworldly properties. Okay, just in case we managed not to find the third part of that one series of notes, when he got trapped in the tomb, he found this glass orb thing that when he first saw it was whole, but then he fell unconscious for some reason, lack of oxygen or whatever. And then when he woke up, it was in pieces. And he just kind of brought it back with him after he was freed from mm -hmm. the tomb. I don't know how he missed the one message. I don't really understand. I don't know. I don't know where it could be. 
No, but the the main the main reason why Shadow Memories is is uh, one of my least favorite Silent Hill titles uh, is because of the fact that it it took the the monster segments, you know, where you have to get away from monsters and stuff, and isolated them from the rest of the experience. So you ran through the the game, you know, and they tried th throwing like little little bits of of sound and noise and color and stuff to kind of get you a little bit wowed up, but you knew that it would never be a threat to you because all the monsters were in monster set sections. That's what I didn't like. By comparison, one of my favorite Silent Hill titles, uh, that being Silent Hill Origins, that one where you actually decide when you go to the other world and when you go back to the normal Silent Hill, that's one of the best to me because it, it's entirely on your hands. You're the one making the decision to go one way or the other, and that's why I like that one a lot better. It's not really, though. I mean, because you have to go to the dangerous parts in Silent Hill Origins eventually. It's just a matter of deciding when to go through that door, you know? Well, that's and what I, that's what I, I it's, know. It's the same as in Shattered Memories. And let me make something clear. Shattered Memories is one of my three favorite Silent Hill games, but I don't think it's scary. I don't think it needs to be. It's still a good game. Well, outside of outside of the way that its design is, and that problems I have with like uh, monster segments versus non-monster segments, I do think that it has a lot of lore going for it. The story is great in Shattered Memories. I think it's one of the best in the series. Uh, it just doesn't really get me riled up like Silent Hill 2 or Silent Hill uh, Origins does. And Silent Hill 3, I hate Silent Hill 3. Don't even talk to me about Silent Hill 3. That game's a joke. Seriously. Okay, so you just saw me uh, yank some wooden stake out of one of these things. Yep. Yeah, you gotta do that so that you can use this. Yep, and that will open the uh, hatch over the hatch, on the other yeah. side. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now you can just crouch, plop down here, and be on your way. What's your feelings on Silent Hill 3? I barely remember it. Okay. I only played it once or twice. And I don't even think I ever got the best ending. Okay. So. Alright. He crashed to the surface. The dark Atlantic water smothered him as he struggled to make sense of the situation. I'm not sure what that's referring to. I don't know either. Okay, so now we've reached uh, the part in the game where we'll be introduced to... What? Oh, water. Yep. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're, we're going to be dealing with the, uh, the camp now. Yep, there it is. Yep. It's just an invisible water monster. Although there is a picture of it you can find uh, that the developer shared at some point, right? I've never seen it. Okay. Actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this seems like a good spot to stop the episode. I think so. So. Yep, so thank you all so... Thank you all so very much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because we really appreciate it. If you want to support us on Patreon, there'll be an end card at the end of the video and a link in the description below alongside links to our social media and Tyler's Twitch account. I hope you'll come and join me. Yep. So, we'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys. All right, next is Catastro, which is Odin. That, um, was a lot cooler than it's normally supposed to be. <laughs>